Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be reviewing the newest album from Brockhampton, Ginger. I was really anticipating this project because overall I'm a pretty big fan of Brockhampton. I first got on board with these guys with the release of the first Saturation album back in June of 2017, a really fun, creative uh, hip-hop project, and I can say the same thing for the two albums that followed that as well, Saturation 2 and 3. Overall, the group managed to make a really interesting, fun trilogy of projects. And when it came to the band's next studio album, Iridescence, that was released last year, I ended up even liking that album more than the Saturation Trilogy. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I, I still stand by it today. And uh, just to you know, prove how much I love that project, I gave it a perfect score. It was my favorite album of last year. And I don't give out perfect scores all that often, less than uh, every year, in fact. So... Uh, coming into this new album here, I was really excited to see what the band was going to do when it comes to switching up their sound and what they were going to do thematically here on this thing. Of course, I was a bit uh, concerned that maybe this project wouldn't live up to the hype uh, as well, especially when you consider that, at least for me, as I said before, Iridescence is one of the few records I gave a perfect score to, and uh, expecting this album to also be you know, a perfect record in my eyes, or, or better, which you know is impossible, was just probably not going to happen, but I was still hoping for this album to be good and more likely than that to be great. And overall, I do think that this is a great album. I don't like it quite as much as Iridescence, but I still think that this is a really solid addition to Brockhampton's discography. When it comes to the sound of this record, I would mostly describe it as being a lot more chilled out than what Brockhampton has previously done. Not to say they haven't had some chill, laid-back tracks in the past, however, I feel like that mood and attitude really permeates Ginger to a much larger extent, and the very upbeat, uh, banger-type track that you typically expect to appear on a Brockhampton album is a bit scarce here on Ginger, but I don't think that this is necessarily a bad thing. There's also not that many aggressive moments on this project, too, and not that Brockhampton has never been a super aggressive group overall or anything, but most of their projects at least have you know, one or two moments that I consider to be pretty angry or aggressive or something along those lines. That's not really the case too much here with Ginger, which maybe only has one moment or so that's kind of angry. Overall, Ginger is a lot more laid back when it comes to the production and its styling here, as well as the deliveries that all the members of the group deliver. When it comes to the lyrics and themes present on this project, I was initially uh, looking at them more so in the context of Brockhampton and their previous works. I think that with the Saturation Trilogy, you really get to see the band develop from this uh, unknown, kind of starving act into this, you know, fully developed, kind of popular, in a sense, group. And I think with Iridescence, the group really showcased kind of the darker side of fame and what came along with it. And to some extent, Kevin Abstract's Arizona Baby solo album released earlier this year did the same thing, just from a more uh, Kevin-focused perspective, obviously. Essentially, the guys in Brockhampton always talk about their own personal lives, and as a result, this kind of reflects in the records being about their own lives at that particular time that they're making the album. And that's certainly the case here for Ginger as well, but kind of placing it into the context of uh, this pattern I noted previously was a bit complicated for me at first. I do think that to some extent this album is an extension uh, of some of the ideas that were brought up on Iridescence, as well as Arizona Baby. Talking to some extent about dealing with the downsides of fame as well as the upsides too. However, I think the way Ginger goes about doing it is very different from either Iridescence or Arizona Baby. I think the biggest thing about Ginger that I got through listening to it is that a lot of the lyrics and topics discussed here have to do with relationships that the uh, members of the group seem to have with each other, with other people in their lives, maybe even with you know God or some religious figure as well. This uh, album, a lot of the lyrics here are really rooted, I feel, in relationships and how they've grown and changed over the years as the band has blown up and how they you know exist and are now. Ginger also feels like a bit more of a confident release than Iridescence of what it was, and just overall the position that the group seems to find themselves in here at this point in time seems to be one that's a bit more certain of their future compared to where they were at with Iridescence, which does make a bit more sense. When you consider Iridescence, it seemed like a release that was put out uh, really quickly after, you know, the whole controversy happened earlier that year with Amir and all of that. It really was a statement, I think, from the band saying that they could still make music together, they were still, you know, doing this Brockhampton thing and they were still going to do it well, and they were still going to be, you know, documenting their own personal lives through their music. 
I think here on Ginger, as more time has passed, the band has been able to kind of distance themselves a bit more from all of that, reflect on it a bit more as well. And on this record, they come across a bit more uh, mature, I guess you could say, when talking about some of this subject matter. At the same time, when it comes to looking forward to the future, they seem a bit more upbeat and confident too. The opening track to this record, No Halo, is one of my favorites on the project and definitely a bit of an odd twist for an album opener for Brock Hampton when you consider that all the previous album openers from the band had been pretty upbeat, uh, fun banger tracks, if not that, something a bit more aggressive. Uh, just an energetic song, I guess, would be the simplest way to put it, but that's not quite the case for No Halo. This is more of a downtrodden, sad song. It's definitely something a bit different. It definitely showcases to the audience right away that this is a different kind of album than anything we've gotten before from these guys. Overall, though, like I said before, I really like this song. I like the very laid-back beat here. I like the very catchy hook to this thing as well, and all the members' deliveries during their verses on this thing are great, too. I also really appreciate the lyrics on this track as well, kind of talking, I guess, about how the members of the band don't really have, you know, like a halo in a sense of being kind of like a holy figure or even just, I guess, like a good role model or something like that. The group members dive into some of the individual problems that they face, and one thing I really took away from this track is that here on this project, the individual members still are talking about a lot of the problems that they've dealt with in the past, but here they seem to be a bit more accepting of these problems and a bit more hopeful towards the future that, you know, even though they may not have, you know, a halo in a sense, uh, they're still going to be able to get through these problems down the road. Especially during the hook of the track where they're talking about how they're sure that they're going to find it. I think that the confidence that the band kind of exudes here on this project isn't one that's you know necessarily certain of what the band's going to end up being in the future, but it's more so a certainty that regardless of what comes in the future, they're going to be ready to deal with it because you know they are a group and they're friends, you know, basically family in a sense, and you know they've got each other's backs. When it comes to the more upbeat tracks on this project, as I said previously, they definitely feel a bit more laid back and chill compared to the typical upbeat fun or at the very least aggressive banger from Brock Hampton that we've come to know and love at this point. Tracks like Boy Bye, Sugar, and St. Percy, for example, are some of the cuts on this thing that I think come closest to being your typical Brock Hampton banger, but for one reason or another, these tracks diverge from that formula in one significant way or another. Whether it be having really chilled out performances from the members of the group, or having a bit of a sad undertone, maybe even having a bit more of a light sounding beat to it, like on Boy Bye, these tracks, for one reason or another, are a bit different from what you might expect from a track in this vein from this group. And in that sense, I do really enjoy what the band was trying to go for on these songs, and I think most of these experiments end up, end up working up rather nicely. As I said previously, one of the biggest themes on this record, in my opinion, is the relationships that all the members of the group seem to have with other people. And along with that kind of comes a need to be accepted by others, which is a big theme on tracks like Love Me For Life, for example, or even a cut like Big Boy. It definitely seems on this record like all the group members want to be involved in some kind of relationship with one another and just the people in their lives. That's a pretty healthy, positive relationship, something like what you might see on the album cover for this project, which has, you know, John and Jova, I believe, hugging each other. A really nice reflection, in my opinion, on some of the ideas present here in the project, considering it seems like throughout this thing, even though that, you know, not everyone in the group member's lives are necessarily there for them all the time, it seems like they are there for each other no matter what. Along with some of the themes of needing acceptance and, you know, essentially having each other's back, uh, one of the other biggest themes on this project that's relating to relationships is betrayal, which is brought up on a couple of tracks on this thing. One of the biggest is the track Dearly Departed, which, uh, when it comes to the sound of this track, uh, the instrumental here is pretty low-key. It allows for the lyrics here to be the, in the spotlight, which I think is really important given some of the lyrics discussed here. One of the best verses, if not the best verse on this entire project, comes from Dom on this track, who at one point is talking about this scenario that involved former group member Amir Van, essentially talking about how he uh, kind of, I guess, was involved in some uh, scenario that involved one of Dom's friends being robbed, and he didn't find this out until after Amir was kicked out from the group. And uh, there's definitely a lot of anger present here in this verse. As I said before in this review, there's only like one moment or so on this project where I really get a ton of anger, and that's probably here on this verse from Dom, because he does seem genuinely angry here, which, you know, I guess is rightfully so, given the scenario he's talking about. 
you can really hear the anger and the sadness that comes from being betrayed by someone that you really care about and trust here on this uh, verse. And it just makes for one of the most engaging moments on this entire project. The trail is also brought up on the closing track to this project, Victor Roberts, which features Victor Roberts, a friend of Dom's apparently, who he had met uh, at some point in the past and had featured here on this project. Overall, I really like the feature he provides here to this track. He has a flow and an energy that's different from all the other guys in Brockhampton, but at the same time, fits in very nicely with their sound and aesthetic, I feel. I would definitely be really happy to see more features from him in the future on Brockhampton projects, or even like, you know, Full material from him. I'm not sure if he has any other songs or albums even out there. I haven't bothered to look, but I definitely will in the future because uh, I think his verse here is really great. And the story that he manages to tell here on his verse is one of the best on the entire project as well, essentially talking about how when he was younger, he and his family had, you know, essentially taken in this uh, kid, I believe, and this kid ended up betraying them because he was, you know, dealing with crack and the police end up coming to Victor's house and, you know, essentially what ends up happening is that this ends up being really bad for Victor, but this other person kind of ends up off the hook because they just weren't there when it happened. Essentially, once again, that feeling of being betrayed by someone that you trust is permeating through this verse. Despite the betrayal that's brought up frequently here at different points on this project, especially on the closing track, I think the last few moments of this song really uh, showcase what the band is trying to go for on Ginger as a whole with addressing the fact that these betrayals and that the insecurities that they have when it comes to relationships exist, but acknowledging at the same time that they need to move past these things in order to stay connected with others that they need. That's why I think in Ryan Beatty's hook that he provides for the track, he talks about how he's thanking God for the people that are still with him there in his life. And that's also why I think during the Bare Faces part of the track, he talks about, you know, if the person he's speaking to is in pain and that they're hurting, they can essentially, you know, love themselves with his own heart, kind of, you know, being there for someone else and allowing, you know, your own love and your own care to extend onto this other person. Overall, as a final statement when it comes to the themes present here on Ginger, I think what the band was trying to go for was essentially talking about the relationships that they have with others, the fact that they're important, the fact that they need to trust others, while at the same time accepting themselves for who they are and being able to move past you know, things like betrayal and other problems and relationships that they've had in the past. And while the group is often indulging in some of the sadness uh, that goes along with these emotions, I think when all things are said and done that this album is one that's pretty hopeful. The track Ginger is another highlight on this thing as well, especially being this auto-tuned ballad that the band has occasionally done before in this past. I think all the verses on here are pretty memorable and distinct in their own right, also pretty catchy too. I can say the same thing for the hook of this track as well. And lyrically, I like how this ties into the themes of the album as a whole, essentially talking about some troubled relationships, things of that sort. Overall, definitely one of the more distinct and memorable cuts from this thing. When it comes to the features on this album, I think overall they're really solid. Aside from the Victor Roberts feature that I already talked about previously, a lot of the other features on the album are really great too. Deb Never's feature on No Halo is pretty great, as is a lot of the features from Ryan Beatty across various tracks on this project. The entirety of the track Heaven Belongs to You is also performed by the featured artist Slow Tie, who does a pretty great job here with the verse that he provides. Once again, I would be really interested to see more features between him and Brockhampton in the future. A lot of the hooks on this album are also really great too. I already know I mentioned some on tracks like Ginger and No Halo is being really catchy, but the same could be said for a lot of the other songs on this project as well. In the typical Brockhampton sense, you have really catchy, memorable, sticky hooks, whether they be provided by members of the group themselves, like Kevin particularly, or you know a featured artist like Ryan Beatty who does a good few on this project. They're always really memorable and great and catchy and you know just very Brockhampton in nature. So overall, I really enjoy the majority of this project. If I do have any complaints with it, I will say that some of the you know instrumentals towards the very end of this track, like Big Boy and Love Me For Life, maybe aren't quite as memorable as some of those that appear earlier on the record. And the fact that a lot of the times they're going for a very similar sound and vibe, I think is kind of what leads it to this point. Also, for as much as I love what we actually get on Victor Roberts, a part of me kind of wishes that we got some more input from some of the other vocalists in the group, considering that 
Bareface is really the only member that has any vocals here in this track that's actually from Brockhampton. The majority of the vocals on this track are handled either from Victor Roberts or Ryan Beatty. And, you know, I guess that's not the worst thing in the world when you consider that both features are pretty great and Bareface's part is great as well. But, I don't know, I just kind of wish that maybe one or two more of the other group members got maybe a little verse or just something in there. All things considered, these complaints really aren't things that get in the way of my enjoyment of the album, despite the fact that I do have a couple of them. At the end of the day, I ended up liking Ginger quite a bit. Like I said, it's not quite my favorite Brockhampton album, and I don't enjoy it as much as Iridescence, but even still, I think that this is a good next step for the band, and I really like what the band was doing here sonically, stylistically, and, you know, thematically as well. Honestly, I can see this album ending up being even more polarizing than Iridescence considering the lack of your typical, you know, straightforward Brockhampton bangers that are probably their most popular cuts, as well as the sonic direction just overall this album decides to go in, but, you know, I don't think that this is necessarily a very immediate album. I think this is an album that if you stick with it, you give it a good few listens, you really digest what's going on, analyze what the group is talking about here on this thing, and, you know, the, a lot of the strengths on this project become a lot more apparent to you. And overall, that was very much the case for me when listening to this thing. It seemed like with every listen I gave this project, the more and more I looked into what they were talking about, the more and more I grew to appreciate it. Overall, though, yeah, I really enjoyed this album. And it's definitely one that you should check out if you're a fan of hip-hop, Brockhampton, just looking for any kind of good new music, generally speaking. You should definitely give this a listen. And, you know, overall, despite the fact that, like I said, I don't think this is necessarily a perfect record like the group's last project, it still gets my highest recommendations. And with that said, that concludes today's review. Thank you guys for watching this, and if you have an opinion on this album that's different than my own, that's perfectly fine. In fact, feel free to leave your own thoughts on this album in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you also leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content, things like album reviews, track reviews, things of that sort. One last thing before I end today's video, something that's not really related to, you know, Ginger or Brockhampton or anything like that, but, you know, for any returning viewers, you might notice that my background here is different than normal. That's because I have moved into a new location, and uh, basically what I'm trying to ask you guys is, you know, leave comments down below, uh, you know, aside from your opinions on Ginger and this new project here, leave your thoughts on this new background here. If you like it, if you don't like it, because uh, with the space I'm currently living in, there's several other ways I could probably uh, try, you know, positioning myself to record some videos in. So if you happen to dislike this one for whatever reason, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below why you don't care for it. If you'd like to see me try a new uh, location, maybe leave me any hints or advice as to what you'd like to see going on in the background or something like that, or why this one doesn't work. Basically, you know, I'm just asking for you guys' input for the, you know, look of the videos in the future. But, uh, yeah, I would greatly appreciate if you do that in the comment section in addition to your thoughts on this project. And, uh, yeah, once again, thank you guys, and stay golden.